Inverness. I'm crossing a bridge at the moment. Uh, just a quick stop and visit there. Uh, the library wasn't too good to sit down and work at. So just moving on. But we're almost at the northern point of Scotland, so we're not far away. I think we have about 140 miles to go, so not far at all. So just having a bit of a bite to eat on a bench with a nice view. So guys, this is worth pulling the camera out. This is the gnarly section of the Euro Velo 1. So I'm heading into the ferry town to catch the ferry. And uh, there's this gnarly hill. I've been on it for like two miles so far. It just keeps going up. It's so rad. Hey, we'll see. Oh yeah, it's such a gnarly hill. Just to think, just a moment ago, I was down there at sea level. Now we're cruising up this. It's still going. Doesn't have any sign of stopping so far. It was only a short ferry ride. 10 minutes um, just crossing over a bit of water it could have been a bridge but and I could have ridden a longer way around I chose to go this way it's very hilly and uh, yeah it was five pounds fifty cents more expensive than going the longer way too but here's what it is So it's a similar scenario to last night guys for camp again. Um, rolling through some more forest and bam. Opportunity to our, to our right again. It's very hilly on this side so I'm not going to go this side but I've got pee so bad so I've got to get off this road. I'm hiking. I wouldn't say it counts as a true forest camp spot. There's a pretty loud noise of traffic on that road there. It's almost like a highway. But I think that someone's house is over there so let's just walk back this way um yeah it's got to pick somewhere flat it's not very flat So that's camp sorted for tonight guys, uh, yeah, it's not f very flat anywhere really around here at all, this is probably the flattest. Hopefully the road noise isn't too loud, like these cars passing right by here. So yeah, hopefully get a good sleep. I've actually got the earplugs that CP gave me, so I'll use those. I'll sleep like a baby tonight. One of the really epic things that I've been loving so far about the UK is the vegan sushi rolls. This is Absolutely amazing. We don't have anything like this in Australia. It comes with this little soy sauce with the vegan fish And it's just vegan stuff, man. So it's really sick. I had to pay up for this. This was two pounds, man I picked these up for 50 pence each with CP uh, when we were exploring the Harry Potter castle and I couldn't resist and I had to pay up. I got like four of them. This is my last batch. I'm gonna get into them. I don't think I've updated you guys. I hinted a few videos back about starting the Lord of the Rings. And I am happy to update you guys that I have finished the first book. And I'm on to book number two right now.
Good morning, guys. We're approaching Bona Bridge. Don't ask me why they called it that. Back on the road again today. I slept a lot last night just to rest up. Just loving the simplicity of bicycle touring. So simple. Get on your bike and ride, eat, camp, and then repeat. Very simple stuff. Oh, and also a lot of time to think. Really surprised with this spa, guys. It had a vegan Moroccan pie and something else that was vegan, some kind of roll. I don't know, I can't remember. But yeah, I'm amazed. Oh, I'm loving the look at this pie. It's got like chickpeas and veggies in it. I thought it was going to be like another fake sort of meat thing, but this looks good as. Oh, that was so good. I'm going to have to go get another one, I think. So I did end up getting that other Moroccan pie, but I'm kind of regretful right now riding away because there was one left there. There was actually two. I got the second last one. I'm thinking maybe I should have got two of them instead. They were that good. It's pretty windy up up on the hills. Um, I've just been riding for a bit though, and it's just been secluded for a bit. I like it. We're just amongst the little bit of mountains here, all the way along the mountains, little streams, by the mountains. If I had one thing to pick, it's just the road setup. Like the roads are so narrow here, they have these little passing places, and it's like a little pocket of road that widens, so you can pull in while the traffic comes through, and then you go again. And it's just really annoying being a cyclist because. When you get wide loads, you have to like kind of stop and then you have to get going and it just kills the momentum. But that's just me whinging and picking on this route if, if I had something to pick about it. But other than that, man, oh my gosh. The sights are just stunning at the moment. These mountains out the back here, incredible. And uh, yeah, just been cruising, guys, and for a couple of hours. I think we're almost finished this route. Very close to it. Got at least another 80 miles or so to go, so we should be done within tomorrow, I'd say. I was also having a chat to my parents on uh, Facebook Messenger and um, they picked on me not shaving for a while. So sorry if uh, the videos look gruesome with my disgusting beard. But I thought I'd give myself a shave right down here on this river here. And when I was halfway through shaving, I came to realize that the water is brown like shit and I've been washing my face in it so that's not ideal but we're getting a good rough shave in anyway Ooh, missing so many spots <laughs> it's disgusting this Guys, this has proven quite the popular route. I've seen three tourists so far heading in the other direction, and that's just on this northern part of the Eurovillo one. So I've written a complete blog article about the whole trail. So if you guys want to check it out, go to cycletraveloverload.com and I've put together everything that I've learned riding this pretty epic route. And yeah, there's more information on there if you want to check it out. But this is probably my favorite part of it so far. And it's near the end if you go from south to north. So guys, we're just in the pub there. Uh, look at this view, nice view. Um, just rejuvenating with some peppermint tea. Um, but I've just been riding a bit further to Thorso. And I think we might even get there by tonight. I think maybe not because I had tea there and wasted a bit of time, but keep riding for a little bit longer. So just stopped here on a bench, just having some snacks. Um, this is the first time on this trip that I've been um, caught off guard with not enough food. This is all I have, so I'm going to down all of this and then try and get to Thorzo by tonight so I can get to the Tesco before they close, hopefully. But this is the first time being caught off guard. This whole trip, it's just been easy, you know? You just find grocery store every single day. It's all 
tight niched and easy to find. Oh, we're riding the Thorzo, got about four miles to go. Slowly getting there with this headwind, but we'll be there shortly. So I made it to Thorso. I'm here at the soccer fields. I think I'm just gonna camp out the back of the soccer fields here. Um, I'm gonna have some dinner here, just sitting down on the, on the seats here. But yeah, we made it. That pretty much concludes the UK tour, guys. It's pretty much all the riding I'll be doing. So yeah, guys, thank you for following along on this adventure. You'd probably think it's the same shot on the same day, but it's actually the next day nearing the night again, the same time that I was filming the last clip. But um, yeah, if you want any more information about the Euro Velo, I'm writing a blog post that should be up by the time of this video posted. So check that out. All the links will be down below for that. Thanks for following along so far on this adventure. It's been a blast and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up, comment down below and make sure you're subscribed so you can stay tuned for more adventures in future. So I'm at the Thurzo train station. This is where the line ends. And I'm um, catching the 8.34 train. Hey guys, so I have a bit of updating to do. I wasn't planning to continue really riding on for the rest of this trip, but I did. But let me update you guys what I've done and where I've been so far. So I got to the very northern point of, not the very northern, but near the north, Thorzo, and uh, I stayed there for a day. <laughs> the library Wi-Fi wasn't that good, so I kind of decided to move on. And I caught a train from Thorzo and I got all the way to Perth. But when I was on the train, I was looking out the window and uh, I was just looking at all the beautiful scenery. And plus like being cooped up in the train, it kind of sent me in a bad loop of mind for the day and I had a headache and everything. And I don't know, I just wasn't feeling that great. So I decided, okay, I was, I was going to all the way to Glasgow by the train. So I thought, stuff it, I'll just get off at Perth and I'll just ride the beautiful scenery that I've just basically been through on the train, which is where I am right now. On, um, I was on the 77 route, and now I'm on the 7 route. And now I'm riding a long way to Glasgow, pretty much. And then I'll be riding from Glasgow to catch the ferry, to then get over to Belfast, and then Belfast to Dublin, finishing in Dublin. And I also must say, like, since solo touring, since CP left, I've kind of been in a, not the best state of mind, I guess, because I've kind of been just like, uh, feeling a little average, just doing the solo tour and being by myself, I guess. Um, I just guess I wasn't set up for it properly. And also, the reason why I just decided I didn't really want to film the rest of my 10 days that I have left of cycling until I fly back home to Australia out of Dublin was because I don't have a helmet on and I was afraid that I get heaps of crap for it in the comments which I probably will now because this will be going on YouTube so having that said I'm sorry I'm not wearing a helmet but I can't do nothing about it I got off the train in Perth my bike must have fell over I didn't notice that my helmet wasn't on my bike, got the bike off the train and then as the train left I realised, oh damn, my helmet, it's on the train, I left my helmet on the train and I rocked up to Perth near the end of the day so everything was closed, I couldn't buy a new helmet and there's no thrift stores around where I am right now so I'm just going to have to, I don't know, I have, you know, I have to actually ride some miles every day so I can make it to Dublin in time to catch a flight. So, having that said, I'll try my very best to find a helmet so then I can wear and be as safe as possible. But having that said, as I left Perth this morning, I caught a charity group ride, group bunch cyclists, and I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna jump on the back and just see if I can stay with them. So, what I did was, I jumped on the back, and there was this older rider, he, um, he was on the back, and I just said, sorry if you don't mind, mate, but I'm jumping on the back, and I'm just gonna see if I can hold it. And I did, held on, and um, yeah, they were just, um, they had a fuel up stop just back there at that town that I was in, and I got some stuff from the shop. Um, but yeah, 
this is me just having a wild tension about everything that I've done, but I pretty much got a free lift into that town back there because I just stayed on the back end, held in there and stayed on the bunch. Um, but he was saying, because I was talking to him about me not wearing a helmet, he was saying that it's not a necessity and it's not actually required here, by law at least, to not wear a helmet because it's essentially not really... And then he essentially just told me about how it's not really a thing of safety. Like you're probably better off wearing a helmet in a car than you would be on a bicycle, he was saying. That was his argument. He had points behind it, which I'm not going to go into because it just take up too much footage. And my arm is getting so sore holding this camera up right now. But, um, yeah. And then I also met another guy who was on the charity ride. He was also a tourer. And he was telling me that he doesn't even wear a helmet when he tours. So that just goes to show that, um, yeah. And I, before I met these guys, I had like this sour idea on my head, negative connotation that when you're wearing a helmet, people are just gonna like, hey, get a helmet on you bloody idiot. At least that's what happens in Australia because by law you're supposed to have one. And I just assumed by, and I just assumed here they're supposed to have a helmet too. But obviously it's not required. So I'm kind of just gonna really just keep riding without a helmet all the way to Dublin if I really have to, if I can't find a helmet. But I'm pretty sure we'll find one in Glasgow. Um, but yeah, guys, just riding the seven route to Glasgow. Um, it's a bit of a longer route. But um, I also did meet another guy who does tours and he said he was in Australia touring and all that stuff. So it's kind of put me in a positive state of mind for I would say hopefully the rest of this trip so yeah, it's always great to meet like-minded people and just get that refresh set and just have a chat. It's always great. Guys, this is camp for yet another night. Uh, set up the tent, um, like the entrance for the. I guess this is like a park, like a national park, is right there. Um, yeah, and I set up here. The road is just right here as well, so right next to the the seven route. Um, and I think there's like hiking trails that go up and along here and stuff. But yeah, I'm set up and uh, I'm ready. I've done some reading already tonight. And I'm just gonna have some dinner and hit the hay. So guys, I didn't really film any of it, but my rear brake cable snapped. And it happened during the worst moment. I met up with some more road cyclists and I was chatting to them. And uh, we were on a downhill and it just went twang, snapped. And like I had to put my foot on the ground and just like come to a halt before running up one of their bums. But yeah guys, that was crazy. I'm on a busy road as you can see. But yeah, we got that fixed and now we're back on the road again. So guys, just been already through Glasgow. Sort of just passed through it. Cities, I guess they're just a dime a dozen. Um, didn't really record much in there, but yeah, got into Glasgow and now we're heading back out following a different route this time, which then should lead us to a ferry that I have to catch to get over to Belfast and then from there we're making our way into Dublin and that'll be where the journey ends. But now I'm just following this route out of the city and yeah let's see where it goes. So just been cruising for a bit today just been riding I think um, we're about like 40 to 45 miles from Glasgow following the, the Route 7 um, that's getting me down to can Ryan where I'm getting the ferry but I came across this stunning setting 
on the beach. I haven't done a beach camp since me and CP did one a while back there. I think I'm going to beach camp tonight. It's very popular today because it's pretty hot, so everybody's out and about enjoying the beach. Um, there's people even in the water. So I might, I don't know, I haven't got a towel, so I probably won't. And then I'll be all salty and everything. But anyway, guys, like the view, it's stunning. You gotta check it out. It's just absolutely beautiful. And the sun is setting over there. So it's gonna be some beautiful scenery tonight. Um, yeah. The tide will probably come into about here somewhere. So I'm set, I'm right at the back. Uh -huh. This will be the ideal spot once it quiets down a bit, I think. Alright guys, it's quietening down. Everybody's heading off to their homes. And uh, this is my home for tonight. Pretty stoked on this setup. Ah, oh, sun is just setting right now. It's blissful. horses. So I set up the tent last night because I thought it was going to bucket down. Just looking at the sky, it was so dark over the ocean. I just thought it was coming for me and it was getting windy and stuff, but I don't think it rained at all. It's better to be safe than uh, saturated. <laughs> anyway, we're back on the number seven path and uh, we're on our way to Ea and Tarun. Ea is about 18 miles, Tarun is about six miles. So yeah guys, we're just cruising our way, cruising our way to Can Ryan for the ferry. So I made it to the ferry terminal. Ferry terminal is actually up the road a little bit. Right there, the ferry's gone already. Um, just been chilling here on this bench. The sun's gonna set eventually. And uh, I am thinking of pitching up right in that back corner of grass, right there, for the night. Because I, uh, I'm not getting on the ferry until 7.30 in the morning tomorrow. So I'm just going to camp here, and then we'll, be, and then we'll jet off early in the morning. I, I decided to do it in the morning because i just got so much time until I have to fly out anyway. So it doesn't really matter. So yeah, the sun is setting, but these bugs, man... I don't know what they are, they're like these little freaking bugs they're everywhere they're trying to eat me alive. So I'm gonna head over there right now. We're gonna set up the tent. I don't even care if it's getting dark or not. I'm just gonna set it up. Not gonna lie, guys, but these are midges for sure. They're just freaking everywhere and they're just trying to eat me. Can you see them? They're just everywhere. Look at them all. Look at them all. Oh, ah, ah. Anyway, I've set up the tent, and I'm getting in there, and I'm just going to stay in there while the P and O just drifts off into the sunset. Well, I guess that was right on cue. I've heard so much about them, um, so I'm glad I actually got to experience it, even though it was horrendous. They are terrible beings. I don't know. It's worse than uh, getting attacked by mozzies, I reckon. 
I just like jumped in the tent and just zipped it up. I don't even care. People see the tent up and they're like, why is he camping? I'm getting away from midges, man. They're hardcore. Made it to the Steena Line ferry terminal. Gonna check in and um, we're making our way onto the ferry in the next half an hour or so. And uh, yeah, we'll be heading for Belfast. So it's stored here in the office, a special little spot right for my bike. Guys, we're in Belfast, just getting off the ferry right now. Just gonna wait here behind these trucks and before everything heads out. It's super loud out in here, but um, yeah, we're in Belfast, gonna get off the ferry, gonna do some gift shopping, I think, at thrift stores and stuff. Um, that's pretty much what's planned for the rest of the day, so not much like scenic cycling or anything like that. So, a big shout out to Gary and Johnny. I parked my bike out the front of the library here, um, but they told me to bring it around the back and lock it up in the car park because Belfast is renowned for thieves and stuff getting stolen. So, grateful for those guys who just spent a few hours in the library getting back on the bike. And uh, I'm gonna head, out, head back out of Belfast and get some countryside scenery in because, let's face it, I'm already sick of the city. So, the weirdest thing just happened, guys. I was cruising down a hill and this dude in Mercedes, Martin's cabs, pulled over and he like told me to slow down. And I was going down the downhill and he gave me a card if I ever get stuck to give him a call. It's the most randomest thing ever. I think he's just trying to get business. <laughs> so guys, it is getting late. I'm on a park bench with my laptop and uh, some pretty spooky street lights. Uh, but, I was down the road like 0.8 of a mile that way. There was a rest stop area and I was thinking that would be a good place to camp. It's very sloped and I was just like willing to just chuck my tent up and camp there for tonight. But instead I decided to move a little further down the road and I found it's like um, an open field area um, and the beach is just over here. But out the back here is like tennis tennis court and stuff so I'm going to explore around there look how, how groovy those lights are and um, investigate and see if it is uh, a reasonable place to set up the tent and settle down for tonight so guys I'm not sure how well this is showing on the camera okay so uh, we made it over to a playground and the beach is right behind me here it's that darkness that you can hear and uh, I'm pretty close to it, so it might not be too, might be too loud. I'm just gonna set up the tent on this side of the fence in between these hedges. It's like a path, I'm just gonna set it up on the path. Guys, a bit of a better look. This was camp last night. Beautiful view. The tide has gone way out. Just packed up this early. 